Hi there. I'm going to try and explain how to do to get started with mapping for Project Zomboid. First things first, we need a map file. I have a couple sitting here in the TMX format. However, being that that's not necessarily clear, let's go and get our own. Find our projects on both directory. We find our media folder and the correct map should be called test.tmx. So you see the way I've got it set up, I can just open that straight away in tiled, which I will do. Right, problems there because it needs all the uh, relevant data files in the same directory. I've got it set up so that all my PZ models available from the forum are extracted into the same directory. Uh, this is obviously your wall tiles, PNGs, and also some other test files and such like. So basically, what you do is you go to Get the mod tools off the forum. Get the TMX from the file. Where's the copy one? So let's copy that and you'd put it in there, but I'm not going to do that because I don't, know, I don't want to overwrite that one because I don't know what it is. Open with Boom, there we go. We have, right, so this is obviously something I've been working on before, which is the mall file. This map itself will actually work in the current version of the project Zomboid, because as you can see, it's got the tutorial house there. Uh, you don't really need to worry too much about that, but uh, it will become clear as you get piss about with the files more and more. But generally what you will end up with is you'll have uh, the normal uh, run-of-the-mill project on board map which will have these houses here and various other houses and obviously there's that little sort of shop down there with a the radar in that sits there and pokes his shotgun in your general direction. Hopefully that's clear but, but regardless of what the map looks like you're going to start pissing about with the files so you're going to get a different map. So you're going to get used to strange goings on anyway. First of all, I'll explain what's going on here. Uh, this is obviously, as you can see, the, uh, the, the view of the map. And at the minute, we're sort of obviously at around about 100% zoom or something like that. So hold control and roll the mouse wheel in and out. We get a better picture of the whole sort of, um, you know, the whole deal. Uh, if we zoom in, we get a bit more. Let's have a look. Yeah, interesting detail there. Let's go back out there. Interesting detail there. Great. Now, one of the fundamental things of tiled is working with layers. You can obviously see the layers up here. They're, they're all named specifically so that they can be dealt with by the engine appropriately. What I will do, just to, to prove a general point, is I will turn all layers off. I've got a zero before them. What that will mean is that basically I've got the ground floor fully visible. So I'll go up there. Tick, 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 It's me. Whichever layer I'm selected on, that's the one I will draw on. So I need to make sure I'm on the right layer every time I start drawing things and if we just go back now we'll see this is the ground floor running through the layers themselves zero floor pretty obvious one it is things like external floors and internal floors uh, the difference between the internal floor and an external floor is generally what tile set it's on but also the sorts of properties it has um, Mainly, I'm thinking any internal floor. If you think about your little guy will walk in this 
this door down here, once he's inside, you need to be able to see him. And if you've got sort of stain going on on the, on the floor above, you may not be able to see what's going on. So any, basically any time anyone is in an internal floor, uh, there's probably a setting in there or something that says it's an internal floor or the way the engine deals with it, that it um, something like that anyway, I don't know. But basically what it means is that all the upper floors turn off and you can see what's going on underneath it. Zero Miranda is a, uh, maybe at first glance a bit of a strange one because it's all of all these crazy red tiles. Um, essentially what it does in terms of my understanding is it puts an internal floor on the on the uh, sort of the map the general map so anytime your guy stands up here uh, it will get rid of it will stop rendering any of the upper floors as if you were standing inside a building so it's sort of, it basically enables you to um, for instance you can see this is all set as, as no render and believe it or not, the no render stuff doesn't get rendered by the engine, so you don't see it. So that this little walkway down here, you can see, is obviously on the render for a reason. And that is because we've got walls there. So if you were walking down there and there was not a no render, you wouldn't be able to see where you were. You wouldn't be able to play the game. So as you're in this area, any wall above no wall will disappear. Right? You see what the hell is going on. Next one, obviously a pretty simple one, no walls, no walls two, no walls three. These are three separate wall layers on level on the zero. Uh, you'll just see as, as I turn off no walls, probably, hopefully, what's going on here. Let's have a look, what have I done? Well, there you go, that's an example of it there. That one there is on walls two. There's one there as well, I just saw it. Yeah, these are on walls two and walls one, basically, so that you can draw the same wall on the same tile, which enables you to deal with, say, a short wall and a large wall on the same tile. So it looks the part, but you've got two walls on the same tile. So again, it handles it differently with walls two, walls three. So you could have three walls on there if you wanted posts, short walls, fences, and all that sort of crazy stuff. They can all be designated as walls on different layers whilst occupying the same tile. Frames is obviously an easy one. It's uh, we'll just turn it on and off to see what's going on. You can see the door frames disappearing and any window frames, probably not that many on the mall itself. So we go and look at a house, how that behaves. So it gets rid of those, those as well. Doors, obviously doors, furniture, furniture. And we've got furniture too, which is other furniture. So you can sort of see, you set up the furniture and the furniture too to suit where you want the map. Generally speaking, you've got less on furniture too, and that only really covers things. For instance, that little poof in front of that sofa, which is above the rug. The rug is on furniture, the poof is on furniture too. Everybody's happy. Uh, but also, you'll obviously see we've got trees on furniture so it's not really a problem just the furniture layers as you can see in terms of the names on the floors above are called objects so it's furniture and objects really that's all it is so that's kind of a quick rundown of what's going on generally with the uh, with the layers now uh, a quick introduction in actually drawing things uh, as I said, you need to be selected on the layer that you're going to draw on. Otherwise, you draw on the wrong layer. Because, for instance, if I'm on walls and I want to draw floors, it will mess everything up, and the engine will try and. I think the way it works is it looks at the walls layers um, and does certain things to them in relation to whatever the game says. Um, but if you find some floors with floor properties on a wall layer. It doesn't really know what to do, flips out, the game crashes, sort of start again, open up your mapping tile and scratch your head while you're figuring out what the hell's going on. Essentially, take care in the way you're drawing it in the first place and hopefully you will never come across that. So what I'll do is I'll just the way I would tend to draw is I would sort of sketch out 
you know the floor because because I suppose one of the things is you need to be wary of um, let's say the limitations of the isometric uh, viewing um, direction and and just try and be one step ahead in the way you, you're drawing things um, because you'll end up blocking something off with uh, your your own walls and such like so if you know what you're going to do beforehand it's far far easier to actually get it all put down accurately which i'm trying to do here and you might be able to see a handy little trick which i'm doing which is using the right button on an existing map element enables you to draw that as an error so i'll just undo that enables you to draw that elsewhere so basically we just find we've got a very easy job of using existing map assets to draw something resembling something sensible we've got obviously what i'm doing now is just stealing all the brickwork and in various little bits with it. Uh, what you may or may not have noticed there is there's a gap there. That is a slight intricacy of the way it's all drawn. At these bottom corners, we need a bottom corner bit, so we get that from there. I will get finish my wall there. And um, what you'll find is that that's a very interesting box. You'll also notice there's doors missing. So what I'll do is. I'll take back to the, the the other way of finding these walls, which is obviously tile walls, tile walls two, tile walls three, tile walls four, etc. I'm looking for some white general pieces. We've got the white pieces there. I'll put another window in this little room, whatever it is, and I'll put a door in there so that people can get in there. And I will put a brick wall in there so people can get in there. Now, I've, the way I've drawn it is very simple. Don't need any secondary wall layers. But for the purposes of this, I'll do some anyway. Uh, so I've got a secondary wall there. I've got a little brick sort of thingy. And now fill in my little brick thingy. And so it does a little brick thingy. Everybody likes little brick thingies. We want a door, and I'll put that there. And oh dear, drop on the wrong layer. Undo that. And we'll put it back on the right there. You can see it goes over the top of it. So we just basically, if you're drawing something, you know what you want to draw, lay out layer by layer, you can't go wrong. I'm going to find my frames. I'm going to put them in. He wants white woodwork because that's the way he rolls. He will get white woodwork because I prefer white woodwork to brown woodwork. And there is our little thingy doors. I wonder where the doors are. They're in tile doors. I didn't believe it. Sticking with the white woodwork theme. Ah, what's going on here? How very strange. Just one thing to be careful with doors. Um, you'll notice there's one, two, three, four doors which appear to be exactly the same. In fact, these first two doors are the actual doors. The second two doors are the open doors. So if you put an open door in, it will lie. It is liable to break things. So really, what you want to do is just put down these first two doors. Boom. Sorted. So add some further. Now, really, the, the, the point of this is scan through the, the objects, find what you want to do, whack them in, and the way that these properties of the objects are set up, there is it's liable, it's, it's likely that they'll all get populated with the right sorts of things anyway. Um, there are very good modding tutorials out there and examples of the way people have dealt with uh, adding items and such like, but I mean, there's, you know, there's really nothing to it. You just need to examine the available uh, objects, make your own if, you, if you're that way inclined, uh, and that's about it really. Just, just keep at it. Um, what I will do is obviously any self-respecting kitchen needs a cyan table, and of course, 
because they have friends around all the time and they like to charge their friends for feeding them they put a till on the table which i think is very good of them i think it's very nice it's capitalism is best fleecing your friends out of their hard-earned cash so you'll notice i started using furniture two to add that till to the table it means it doesn't overwrite the lower table likewise furniture two under that mirror doesn't overwrite that mirror finally curtains Again, similar to, to um, well, similar to nothing really, similar to other curtains that you've put in before, but if you want that, you're probably not interested in the next bit. Curtains, you've got one, two, three, four. One curtain goes there. Two curtain goes there. Three curtain would go there if this horrible abomination of a house had anything like the right amount of daylight. And the fourth curtain there because obviously you need two windows in your toilet in case anybody wants to spy on you while you are taking a wee uh, and basically that is ready to ready to go uh, we've we've been methodical with the application of our layers we've been using the tile function very nice oh, look at this it's another good little trick for you Instead of using the right button to select one tile, you can use the right button to select many tiles. And that just enables me to quickly draw a roof on top of my thing. And also, of course, we talked about no render. Essentially, the principle of no render would be to get the no render in the tiles where you want people to be able to see behind walls and such like so normally the way i approach it is to draw the sorts of general boundaries of the, of the no render now we we'll just sort of turn off the obstructive layers and it just enables me to just fill them in and then that's pretty much a little house ready to sort of explore oh, it is so uh, thanks for listening, uh, save that and we'll call that a day.